Hey, welcome back to Random American, and today we're doing something really different. And uh, it's cold outside, and we're going to make our own hoodie to keep us warm. Stick around. Okay, so last year I got the idea, uh, maybe as year as year before, I got the idea of I really like wool as an insulator. And I thought, I wear hoodies all the time. Wool hoodie will be warmer than a regular one. And I think it'd be a lot handier. I can make it however I want to. But there's a problem with wool. And that is, it's itchy. And it's not the most uh, durable on the edges and all that. So I spent a lot of time, did a lot of thinking, and learned how to sew. Bought a sewing machine, got that fixed because it was free and had a broken gear in it. And here we are. Now this particular one kind of looks terrible. It has different color thread in it and none of the seams are straight and it's got broken thread and it's got spots that aren't right and all that, but I learned a lot. And what I learned, I'm going to try and to I am going to try and apply it to this video. So it's not your typical wool garment. It is made out of a blanket and it has a lining of microfiber bed sheet. So if you're allergic to wool or you just don't like how scratchy it is, like I don't, uh, I put a lining in here. I reinforced all the edges. I reinforced the shoulders. I reinforced all these seams that are going to take a beating. I uh, lined the inside of the pocket, not completely because I didn't think about it at the time, but I think I made something worth sharing, and I'd like to show you guys exactly how to make your own. So today, we're making a nicer version of this. This one I've worn on the farm a lot. Uh, I can wear this thing down. If I put a vest on over, I can wear this down to zero, maybe a little colder, depending on if you're moving or not. Uh, all of my hunting I do in this thing. Uh, it's honestly gone above and beyond anything that that I can buy in a store. And you can do this, I'm not going to say for a little bit of nothing, but you can do this very cheaply compared to what you would go out and buy. Now, I did get this idea from another guy that makes wool hoodies, but he doesn't line his and he doesn't reinforce his. So I just basically took his idea and approved upon it, what I thought would be weak points, what I thought wouldn't. And honestly, it's been super nice. So if you want to make your own, here's how you do it. So the first step in making your own hoodie is go to Walmart or wherever and get the absolute cheapest thing that you can find or anywhere, or maybe even a, maybe even a hoodie that you have that uh, is pretty well tore up. Get that, get one that fits you, and then immediately get a seam ripper and cut it apart. The seam ripper is just this little guy. Seam ripper is this little guy right here. We'll get into it a little bit, how to use it and how to go about uh, tearing your hoodie apart. So once you have it and all of your individual sections, this is obviously the main torso. This is your hood or half of it because your hood is two pieces. Um, I have everything else around here. I started on this video last year, but we had puppies at the time and there's no way you could not hear them losing their minds and playing the entire higher time so this kind of got put on hold um i already have all this cut out so i'll bring you in real quick to show you how i cut it out and we'll keep on a trucking okay so here's the basics of it and something that you might struggle with that i did is i have this laid out and you have to keep something in mind the fabric that you're getting from most places stretch whenever you're uh, putting it on or moving around. And wool really doesn't 
stretch a whole lot. So you're going to have to do a few things. First, what I did on my other one is I got this. You spread it out nice and even. And since this stretches, you have to try and do everything you can to make sure that you are getting consistent layouts every time. So don't spend too much time flattening it out and stretching it and stretching it and stretching it and stretching it. Because whenever you lay it down again, it's going to shrink back and then you have to spend all the time doing the same thing. So get it pretty well basically laid out and you'll get it traced out all the way around. And whenever you get it traced out, I got a few things. I got one of these, just a, uh, just a basic ruler for this kind of stuff. It's so wide and so long and all that. So you'll lay this out and I have gone right around two inches wider all the way around this thing. And if you make it too big, you can always cut away from it. It might uh, take a little bit more time, but you can always cut away from it and we'll test fit this as we put it on or get it put together and all that. So you get this laid out, you get it traced, you get this, Oh, or you get this set over here and you make everything a little bit wider. I made mine a little bit longer too. So it would come down a little bit further to keep the uh, wind off of me a little bit more. And as far as cutting this stuff out, it's super easy. I went and got just a basic one of these little kits that kind of came with most things from, uh, Oh, it was either Walmart or Hobby Lobby, one of the two. Then you get one of these, and it's a roll cutter. This is actually decently sharp. I bought one of these mats. I don't measure with this as much as I thought I would. I do a little bit, but I don't measure with it as much as I thought. But it's a very good cutting surface, and this thing, I mean, it just... And you can follow around and... I did get a nick in it somewhere. I think I dropped it. And now I have to sometimes go over the same spot twice. But it works pretty good. I really like these. So you'll get your front cut out. And you'll have to do this in two pieces. That the front always has a deeper cut for, your, for the neck. And then the back will always be a bit flatter. Now, keep in mind, if you're making this wider, you don't necessarily just want to add to your edges. I actually added a little bit down the center. So yeah, I had to get a little bit creative here. And I made some cardboard layouts for later on for some pieces. Okay, so as you can see, I made some cardboard cutouts. Same thing, except for since I was adding with this so much, I got my cardboard cutout. Um, I didn't have quite enough material to do the whole thing because your sleeves are actually a lot wider than what you expect. So I got this laid out. I traced it down the long and I made this for half. So I'll basically set it on and then flip it. And then I made the sleeves a little bit longer. I didn't necessarily have to do that, but I still did because the end of these sleeves had an elastic cuff on them that took up an extra inch and a half, two inches there at the end. So I accounted for that. And your left and right sleeve is going to be the same. Doesn't matter. Your hood, this hood mold is a little bit too big. So my, I'll show you on that one. It comes down just a little bit floppy. But this hood mold's a little bit bigger than what I wanted, which again, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to custom fit all of this. So pretty much I just traced this out for the most part and I kind of took a little bit of liberty with the edges. What I thought I was going to do was this and I was going to fold it over and put a string in. I really don't need a string so I might I'll see how it all fits together. But I'm definitely making a smaller hood than I have on that one because I need to actually cut that hood down a little bit. But this hood would work just fine, just having it folded over like this and cutting two of them out and you're good to go. Nothing too crazy with this. So what I will note on here, because we're about to start cutting out the liner, 
the inner liner for this thing and actually attaching it to this. So if you have to go through here, see how I have a center mark on this all the way down from my piece of cardboard? That is perfectly fine because this is going to be the inside of my sleeve. This is going to have a liner on it anyways. It doesn't matter how much you wash this thing. It doesn't matter what you do. The only way you would ever see these lines inside of here is if you actually rip the liner out. And then at that point, you have bigger problems. Okay, so now we're going to the liner itself. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but this is microfiber bed sheet. And the reason why I chose this is two reasons. One, well, there's a few reasons, actually. One, it is soft. Two, it's relatively cheap for what you're getting. And three, uh, it doesn't breathe very well. So it helps keep a lot of stuff, a lot of heat in. Uh, it's actually known to be a hotter bed sheet, and I'm, it, it does help quite a lot. The wool doesn't breathe a hell of a lot either, so I think working them both together is pretty, pretty well a good choice. So whenever we're going to go ahead and cut out our liner, it's going to be pretty basic, pretty simple. You don't have to overthink this kind of stuff. Just get this laid out nice and flat. And it doesn't matter which side you lay down first or any of that. Uh, I'm going to cut out enough to where I can roll this over and stitch this to my sleeve all the way around. So what I've done on this hoodie is I actually cut out individual strips for it and then sewed those over the edges to keep from having this right here. And that was not in any way necessary. I did not have to do that at all. I could have just made this a little bit bigger, rolled it over. So every single scene, no matter what, had this rolled over on it. Uh, I might actually just cut one side a little bit big. And then whenever I fold this over to sew it, I can just fold that over all as one. I think that might make a little bit nicer of a, a seam on there. Kind of. Not really seal it in, but sort of seal it in. I don't know. We'll get it figured out. No, I'll go ahead and stitch it all the way around because that'll that'll take a lot of guesswork out of this. And we just kind of do what we do. So we're going to get this cut out. Or we're going to get it marked out and then cut out and go from there. Okay, so I changed my mind. All right, so we're going to go right along over here. I'm going to leave a little bit of space to fold this over here but not on this side, if that makes sense. And we can cut this way too big over here. It's not really a huge deal. And if you think it's too much, you're probably wrong. And just follow this seam right over here. Okay, this over here, I'll go ahead and leave it a gap. All right, now we have that there cut out. A little notch in there. There. I've screwed this thing up just a little bit, but I cut a lot with it. Try to find the spot. But anyway, whenever you're tracing along this line, you'll have the want to do that to push your fabric as you go, and it'll mess up your ends. Best thing is, however it is laying, let it sit there, let it lay. It'll be perfectly fine. So now what we'll do is we'll end up rolling this edge over like that and we'll sew that on and we'll go down along this edge. I think, see these get kind of complicated. I'm trying to remember because this was a year and a half or better ago is quite a while. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and roll 
these in because this is all going to be up by your arm. And then whenever we fold this over to sew it together, this will all be already sewn together. We'll bring this edge over like that. So this will all be inside. And this is all your arm will be touching. So you won't have any of the itch. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of them cut out. Doing something similar to this. And I'll be right back with you. Okay, now that we have everything scientifically cut out, uh, we're going to go ahead and start stitching up our borders. Uh, what I did to make this a little bit easier is I took it to my other table and got it all laid out and then set it on here like this and put my foot down on here and kind of held it in place. I'm not getting too specific on how far away from here I am. I'm just going to try and keep the edge of this foot on the edge of the wool, then we'll call her a day. And I'll make sure that I'm actually stitching my liner in underneath of it. Uh, so I'm gonna start out with no movement, and I'm gonna go pretty well as wide as I can. And I'm just trying to make a start where this doesn't come untied, and it'll be kind of a strong point. Sort of right there, go back to the center, and we'll go, 15 stitches per inch. I think that'll be about right. I did cheat a little bit and uh, tested this because I put just regular thread up here. And going through this, I don't know if it's like going or if it's like uh, sewing other things, but I try to do my best to make sure that it's going to stitch before I start with whatever thread liner or whatever setup I'm doing. So I don't ruin a bunch of pieces like I did on the other one. And we're just gonna take this nice and uh, nice and easy through there. Do not get your fingers underneath of this. It will go through your, your, your finger bones, I swear. Always coming under here to check, make sure it's lined up nice. This is stitching all right. Yep, that's doing just fine. I'll show you an example here in just a second of what it looks like when it's not doing fine. And it's pretty obvious. One thing I did learn is if you don't keep a little bit of tension back here pulling the wool through, uh, it will make your liner get short on you real quick. So keep that in mind. Now that we're at the end, we're going to do the same thing. Going to finish it off with a, I don't know what you call it. Zero, put that back to 15. Make sure your needle's up. Pick up your foot. Pull it out real easy. Slide, because you can break your needle if you pull on it too hard. And voila. We have one started. Now I'm going to do the same thing, just going around all these edges and we'll successfully have it stuck to this. It's kind of like your welding or your hot gluing or whatever it is. Okay, so now we have this one completely done. It's all good. I'm gonna go through and just trim this, all this extra stuff, kind of close, and I might burn the edges of it. But other than that, I'm gonna get to working on the rest of it, and if there's anything else that comes up, uh, we'll get right back with you. Alrighty, I got a couple of quick tips for you guys. I'm doing the hood right now, right? See, that one looks super nice. It's all in this one looks super nice. Well, <clears throat> see that line right there? <laughs> see how this one doesn't have a line right here? Uh, <clears throat> I put this on the wrong side. So, whenever you're putting these together, make sure you do it correctly. Uh, also, I'm going to be redoing this one because I skimped a little bit and I have that cut part. And there's really no reason for me to skimp on that because I have more than enough bed sheet over there. So that really shouldn't have come into my equation. Another thing, I'm figuring out that just go ahead and cut this liner way too big for this because 
I'm just going to trim off the excess anyways. So yeah, go ahead and do that. I might put that little bit of a tip there at the very beginning. So yeah. Uh, here we go. Alrighty. Now let's make another cutout and this time I will put it back together correctly. Okay, so I have all of the liners in now. Uh, I did not see how, how I have these folded over. I don't have it folded over here because I plan on using the extra from the hood to create a layer through here that I don't get itchy from this. But now we're going to start putting this together from the top down. And I'm going to do it with the uh, inside out. Get these all lined up. And these ends that look ugly, doesn't matter. It's all going to be hidden. Not a big deal at all. I now have um, upholstery thread on here because it's a lot tougher and it'll hold up a lot better. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to get this straight as far over as I can. And I'm going to give myself some room if you need to, what I should probably do, but I'm not because I'm dumb. Uh, I'm going to give myself some extra room right here so I can fold these flat and it'll make a more comfortable seam over top of your shoulder. So I'll set my foot down. I'll go ahead and do a little starter thing. Again, this isn't a tutorial on how to sew. This is just what I'm doing. If you want to be able to do it right, you're going to have to talk to somebody else. So now whenever we go to finish this off, we'll lay this flat and we'll put a piece of engineer tape over top of it. And that'll keep all of that from uh, sitting on our shoulders and itching our neck. And it'll give it a lot more rigidity up here on top. Right now, we're just going to go over here. All right. And do pretty much the exact same thing. I'm more worried about the seams on this side uh, coming together flush rather than over here. You have to keep in mind that this up here sets the tone for the rest of the hoodie. So a little bit extra fiddling with it really isn't going to hurt you. Uh, I might bring that over a little bit more. Okay, and here is the start of your hoodie. You have your front, you have your back. Alrighty, so now I'm going to get this flat and then put a piece of engineer tape over it. Alrighty, now we have this all laid out flat. I'm gonna, and you could leave it like that if you wanted to and it'd be all right. And you see how it's, that out here looks all nice and clean and whatnot. We're gonna ruin that slightly. This is engineer tape. It's not sticky or anything, it's just nylon. You can spread it apart sideways, kind of easy. But boy, is this stuff tough. You will never ever break this or wear through it. And I'm just gonna get a piece. So on here, I'm gonna do it a little bit long. And I'm basically going to do the exact same thing that I just did, but with this over top of it. And it will make this considerably stronger and it'll make a really good wear point. And it's super soft. And see, I ruined it a little bit because I didn't follow that exactly. If you want, you can do this all in one, but I found it a lot easier to just go ahead and stitch this flat and then put your tape in there. All right, so we have everything stitched together on the top here. Uh, I just finished up the sides and stitch, stitched across the ends. Uh, I would have gotten that on camera, but my camera died, aka my phone, because that's where I'm still at. Anyway, now we just have a overly complicated poncho because it doesn't have any sleeves or hood and or pocket or anything fun. 
So we're gonna get into putting the sleeves on this. Uh, I'm going to put them on with everything but connecting down here. So last time I put it all together in the wrong order. I had this all sewn on the sides and then tried to connect it at the bottom and it was a mess. So my order of operations have changed. Now I'm going to do the sleeves, everything but the connector, and I'm going to do the back half of the hood and I will connect it the rest of the way around. Uh, I might go ahead and do it all. Uh, we'll figure it out. And then I'll do the pocket. I will do the bottom hem. And I will do the sides last, very last, very last thing we do. And then we'll have a completed hoodie. I mean, we're getting close. We're getting close. So, yeah, let's jump into that. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm getting the point or the top part of my sleeve and I'm putting it at the top here. And we're just going to run this all the way around. I'm just going to try and get as close to the edge up here as I can, I think. I don't think I'm going to Yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to get as close to the top edge up here as I can. As long as this right here meets in the middle. And we'll see how it goes. It should go all right. I'll still start off the exact same way I do on all of it. A little bit of side to side action. Oh, <laughs> I didn't have my foot down. Make sure you always have that down. If not, you're gonna look like a moron. Why didn't you tell me that? Like, I thought we were friends. Now we're gonna get serious. This gets a little bit trickier because then you start screwing with everything else, but it's still the exact same thing. I'm gonna pull this over here, get it straight as we can, and just keep on a trucking. And bam. That sleeve is officially attached. So a note to you guys, if you're gonna do this, just use a black sheet. All right. Anyway, let's go and get this other one on. Your hood's gonna be just like anything else. You'll get it all lined up because they should be pretty much the same piece. I'll go ahead and fold that over. Start off the same way as always. You're never going to believe this. I ran out of my bobbin thread right at the end of that. That's... Wow. Alrighty then. So yeah, this looks terrible. And I'm just going to go through here and trim it real quick. And I'm going to re-thread my bobbin, I guess. So right here, I missed a spot and I actually have a little bit of a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back here. A little bit more, I'll blend it. Mm, let me see how far back actually do I have to go? Oh, okay. Yeah, I can come back to right here. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna make me a little spot. center, put that on the left, and sure. So this is actually, to me, the most nerve-wracking part 
which is getting my hood centered. Okay, so I got it figured out. I'm gonna go ahead and get a paint marker and a tape measuring tape measure. Jesus, can't talk. And find absolute center, so I can put that on it. I'm gonna have to make a little ribbon for this because I didn't make that long enough. But that's okay. That's all a part of it. Be back in a second. So there's half the hood on. And man, is this a mess to do. Uh, by far the most infuriating part of this entire process. So far. Alright, the hood is technically on. But I'm not going to call it a win until I try it on. Okie dokie, so the hood is on and it fits. It looks like crap, but we're about to fix that. So, right here is the front of it. It has a gap in the front. And we are going to take our engineer tape. And we're going to come from just about the bottom corner of this one. And we're going to let it wrap up and around like so, and then we'll take this and go along the entire edge of this hood, like this one. So it makes that all very strong, it makes it soft, and I have liked this so far. Now since I've made this hood smaller, I have this gap and I haven't quite figured out the geometry of clothing making. I am going to connect this across and I'm going to do the exact same thing except I'm going to reinforce the very front of this at the same time. Let's see how well it works. Alrighty, so I have screwed it up in a couple of spots. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can bring it back to about here. Mm. I'll bring it back to about here and then redo all of this but coming this way because this is the side that actually you actually see that you actually care about. All right, so after three of the biggest tacos I've ever seen in my life, this is done. I'm probably going to stitch back across that real quick. <clears throat> then we'll move on to the pocket and then we'll be wrapping this whole thing up. So let's get to it. So how I did it on the other one was I had it four inches from the bottom and centered. And that's what I plan on doing with this one. This might seem like a big pocket, but uh, this is the same size as the Carhartt ones. So, Alrighty, so I'm adding some border to my pocket. I'm not going to go and do the inner liner. It was, it was pissed me off. So, here we be. And we're gonna see where I take it from here. Cause I'm not sure yet. Oh. So, I'm thinking, I know, always a dangerous thing. Having that over top as reinforcement for up here. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm just making this up as I go along. most things in my life. So I'll run a stitch along down here to attach this part to the hoodie and then I'll run a stitch across the top for reinforcement. And I think that's all the more I'll do. I don't think I'm going to do anything down here. So I do have this marked with a little tiny dot that I'm not going to be able to see, so I don't think anybody else is going to be able to see them either. That corner right there. And then this corner over again. Huh, that actually worked pretty good. Pretty well made that seam disappear. Kind of impressed by that. Don't know I never thought of it before. Okay. So 
Burning these edges off is not going to go quite as well as I'd hoped. All right, enough of that. The pocket is done. So now we're going to get to everything else. And I'm going to start this. I should have put this on the other side so I could have folded it this way, but that'll be all right. Oh, no, I'm not either. I need to put some of that there engineer tape around here. Oh, about messed up. So I'd like to eventually get to where I can put a cuff on the inside of here, but I'm not doing that right now. Okay, so you didn't miss much. All I did is I stitched all the way down here and I came across and I come all the way down here to the bottom and I tied it off. Coming through here is quite difficult because you're going through like 20 damn layers of wool. Um, I ran the sewing machine by hand a little bit to get that through there without tearing anything up. This side, pretty much the same thing. There was only one little difference is I have this on the wrong side, so I had to have this the other way, to have this flap on top to be able to uh, keep track of it, because I'm not good enough to not do that. And I run this all the way down. I crossed this stiff part again, and I tied it off. I flipped it around, and then I come up from the bottom this way and tied it off right up here in pretty much the same spot. So that's really the only difference from side to side, and it's strictly because I did this on the wrong side. Uh, other than that, I added this to the bottom of it, and I cleaned up a bunch of the uh, loose threads sticking around. I still have a couple of spots, like right here, that has some wool poking through, but it ain't, it ain't much. I mean, overall, it's this really soft microfiber bed sheet, and that's the paint that I spilled all over the place, got all over my hands. Pull the whole top off the marker, I don't know. Only me. So, let's go ahead and try it on. Get this thing turned right side in. Oh, tease you a little bit. So here's how that turned out. For the hood, I just crossed the two sides and stitched through it. That should be pretty damn strong and it hides a lot of this. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this turned right side in, or right side out. Arms are a little tighter than that other one. I have some of this to clean up in through here, but I'll get that probably tomorrow, just screwing around, nothing, nothing crazy. I can, I can do something different to fix it, which would be kind of how I did the sleeves, where I just had one of them long and folded that over. That's what I should have done instead of this. But hey, it'll be all right. Living to learn. Oh, God. Yep, arms are tighter on this one. Oh, oh it still fits good, though. Oh, I missed one. Uh-oh. There we go. Man, it fits good. Arms will maybe work out just a little bit. This thing needs broken in. The pocket's really nice. I like this. I can stick my fingers in it like a Chinese finger trap. The hood's a little bit big, but that's perfect. That's about how I wanted it. Yeah, I like this thing a lot. Uh, I will, these might be a little small, but we'll see how they work out. I'll, uh, if anything, I will split these and add a button in right here, kind of like you do for a flannel. No big deal, no harm, no foul, nothing, nothing lost, but yeah. I am a huge fan of this thing. Let's see how it fits compared to that one. 
So I got this one, the one that I've been wearing for a year and a half, two years, I don't know. It's been a while. Okay, okay. Oh. I like the way this one fits a little bit better, but it's broken in and I'm used to wearing it. See the hood is excessively big. What I need to do is cut it free from here and actually make it shorter so it'll be a little bit tighter around. But I still like this one. Uh, it's got fuel and all sorts of stuff on it. And this thing is ridiculously warm. So there you have it. There's the new hoodie. Uh, I encourage anybody that wants to stay warm in the winter and has to be outside, give this a shot. I mean, I'm in it 60 bucks or so. I got one wool blanket, uh, cheapest microfiber bed sheets I could find. You don't have to use microfiber, you can use anything in the world. Um, and a little bit of engineer tape, you get a whole roll of this stuff for a little bit of nothing. Uh, the sewing machine, I got it for free and I had to put a gear in it and that was just for from some people that just wanted to get rid of it. A little bit in thread, a whole lot in frustration because it's a learning curve. But, as you can see, it is doable, and it's very, very well worth it. Now that this is done, this will last me for years, and this will keep me warmer than a lot of the Carhartts that I own. So, I'll end it there. You guys have a good one, and I hope to see you guys on the next one.